Okay, cool. So uh, 15 minutes left and 54 slides. That gives us uh, 14 seconds per slide or something. <laughs> sessions. Uh, Memcache sessions, right? So App Engine sessions, you have three options. You could use Google Logins and their session. You could use Gorilla sessions with manual routing. And we've seen that. And you could use a session ID and memcache. I think this is the one I'm liking the best. You know, and then data store for persistent. So you do a regular cookie, you store that uh, cookie, uh, you store in that cookie a session ID and you use memcache for their session. Okay, to store like, you know, just like we use cookies to store like whatever, you know, somewhat temporary, it might be gone next time, the user could delete it at any moment. We'd use a cookie for that kind of stuff. We could also just have the cookie for the session ID and then store all that other stuff in memcache. Main advantage there is that the cookie's got a limited file size, limited size, and if it's near the max, it's going to be it's going to be going along with every HTTP request. You don't want to have to send several kilobytes of cookie data every time you go to the web page. You can just have like an ID number or something, and the server can look it up in its cache instead, in the memcache instead. Yeah, does that make sense, right? Like, you know, just from a performance user experience kind of standpoint, we don't want our users sending or receiving any more data than they need to. And if we're passing all this data in a cookie each time, then if they're on a mobile phone, that could be increasing their data usage and their bill. They're paying for that, right? And it's also slowing it down because we're having to send more data. You know, versus if, uh, uh, and, and we can only store so much in a cookie. So I'm just reiterating everything you said, but I just want to make sure those points are clear because those, those are very good points. Uh, memcache, so let's look at memcache. Uh, the backstory of memcache is that, you know, there's some big company and they realized that their servers weren't using all of their capacity. When they looked at it, it's like, hey, this has a gig of RAM, which back when memcache was invented, that was like a lot, but it's only using 100 me megabytes. We have all these servers and they're using like 10% of their capacity. What can we do with the rest of that RAM? And so Memcache was built to use all that unused uh, hardware, all that unused memory, right? And then also to, you know, uh, improve a user experience. So Memcache is nothing more than a big map distributed across all of your machines, right? And so you can kind of picture that, you know, like what that might look like and just kind of look at the right side. You have Memcache and, you know, this is more of a, a like, you know, a way for us to see it you know, as opposed to the way it's actually built. But we have RAM in all these machines, and so we can store stuff in, the, in that. And so we just have to remember, okay, I'm storing key value stuff, and which place did I store it? Well, it was on this server in this memory location. And then I also stored another piece in, on this server in that memory location. And so you just have a program over here that knows all of the available servers, and on those servers, all the available memory on those servers. And now, you know, it's just like a big uh, allocation table or something. It's like, okay, you want, you want this key and value? That's on that server and that memory location. Here it is, right? And so it's just going and looking at each of the servers, and it's using that RAM and all those servers. So that's, that's memcache. That's, that's the way it originated. Whether or not that's the way it's implemented at Google or whatever, I don't know. Like, they're, they're only using the unused stuff. Maybe they just have a bunch of dedicated RAM only for this purpose, right? Who knows? But same general idea. Same general idea. So the thing is, it's a big map distributed across all of your machines, a big distributed map. Memcache is very fast. You're storing things in memory, so it's much quicker than doing some sort of a SQL query, absolutely, and even quicker than data store, yeah. right? Data store and SQL have to go off the hard drive so for because uh, they need persistent storage. So memcache is in memory, which you lose it if your machine goes down, but, but it's much, much faster. And you could use Memcache to improve uh, data retrieval performance. So you could cache database queries in Memcache, right? And you could say, hey, is this in Memcache? Yes, let me just already get that query from Memcache. Otherwise, no, well, all right, let me go to the more permanent secondary storage, you know, hard drives, uh, schemaless NoSQL databases or SQL databases. And uh, I'll get that, and then I'll, I'll re send the results to the customer and then also store that result in Memcache in case I need it again. So this decreases load on databases, which increases performance, right? And not only that, Memcache is faster access. So you could use Memcache for sessions. Instead of storing user data in a cookie, you store it in Memcache. I'm pretty sure, too, Memcache only doesn't have a quota. A quota. Um, Google just kind of automatically manage it. You don't have any kind of quota, whereas the data 
data store and various databases do have quotas for uh, per amount of accesses. So if you're trying to stick to, to, stick to free stuff, uh, using memcache can, can stretch out your, uh, your quotas. Said very much, very well like a college student. <laughs> but th that's always important, right? Like how do we keep our costs down? So why not just use a map instead of memcache? There's the question Caleb posed to all of us at boot camp. Right? Like why use memcache at all? A map is just, you know, map and memory. Why not just use a map instead of memcache? I don't know. And this is, uh, this is what he drew on the board for us. And why, why, why is this not a good idea based upon that? So what's happening here is we have a request come in, and then it hits the load balancer. And the load balancer, like our app is running on different servers, right? Same app. And load balancer says, well, this one's at 80%, 80%, 20%. I'm going to send it to this one to handle it, right? And so it handles the request, right? Why would, if we used a map in App Engine as opposed to Memcache, why is that a bad idea? It's not coordinated across all of our machines, all of our servers, right? And so, like, we might, we might have this server set a map, and that's not going to be, you know, and then another request comes in, and it gets routed to here, and there's different data on the map in this server, you know? And so we need something that's more, uh, you know, as a user makes requests, they might be going to different servers, and we need, we need the map to be able to be accessible across all servers instead of just one, you know? Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that well. All right. That sounds about right. Wow. No better explanation. So if you need something to absolutely be there, you got to use a real database. So that's just a really main point you need to remember with memcache. It's like a cookie. It's uh, volatile. It could go away. So here, the memcache docs, right? So uh, you go into the app engine go thing, and, uh, and then you click under services, then you click on memcache, and then you have reference right there and there are your docs and when you look at reference you see some of the important functions I've highlighted here get set an item right so all right get something set something and then you know if you uh, set something you uh, give it you give it the context and the item and it returns an error if you get something you give it the context and the key and it returns the item and so what's an item right we can go look at an item an item is a struct that has a key and a value and who cares about the rest of the stuff well it also has an expiration we'll look at that Right, so key value expiration, so just struct, and uh, and this is just kind of what I shown you earlier about like, hey, how do I find things about App Engine? Can I do it at GoDoc App Engine? No. Can I do it at GoLang Package App Engine? No. Can I do it at GoDoc.org? Google da 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 da. Yes, I can do it that way. GoDoc.org with the Google.GoLang.org App Engine memcache, and uh, can I do that over at GoLang.org? No, because that's just the normal standard library. And, uh, and then there's like, you know, on GitHub, there's, you know, Golang App Engine, where you could actually look at that. So anyhow, that's FYI. We kind of talked about that at the beginning of class. Set, get, and memcache item. Let's look at each of those. And so there's an example, right, you know, when you kind of go into the documentation for memcache. And here's the example, and you can see get, set, item being used. And so, hey, you create an item, right, memcache item, you give it a key value. And then you set that, and you give it the context and, and the item, and if there's an error, you deal with it. And then when you want to get it, you just say memcache get, and you give it the key, and it returns the item, right? And then you do some error checking. And if the item zero is returned, you can say, hey, here's item zero key, item zero value, and you could, you could print that out, right? So let's see that in action. And so step one here is, uh, you know, we get a context. And we do memcache get some key and item and nothing gives us nil. So it's just kind of like, okay, let's see how we try to get a key and nothing comes back, right? There's no keys yet. We haven't said anything. It just gives us nil. And then like the step, next step would be to actually set an item. So I'm going to create an item, memcache item. And I changed, I changed this slightly from the documentation. The documentation says to set an item and take the memory address immediately. And uh, I might have this incorrect, but uh, one of my code mentors is Bill Kennedy, that guy who wrote that other thing. And he said, never take an address until you absolutely need to take an address. Right? And I don't absolutely need to take an address yet, so let me just create my item. And when do I need to take an address? Well, memcache set takes a pointer to an item. Let me give it that address. Right? So that's just kind of an interesting perspective from, you know, and he had more to say about that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that 
you know, you know, maybe he'd call me an idiot, hit me upside the back of the head <laughs> if he was here. Because <laughs> maybe he has certain situations where it, it applies, but I'm pretty sure that that's what he intended. Yeah. All right. Right here, I don't think there's much difference. No difference. There's no difference. Yeah. From a performance standpoint, even, I don't think there's any difference yeah. here. So. Yeah, but just kind of wanted to point out why I changed that. So if you're looking and comparing. Yeah. And then we do, uh, so we set it and then we get it, right? And uh, when I ask for a foo, it gives me back a bar, right? Pretty cool. You guys know the origins of the word foo bar? Do you? Who does not? Uh, I'm not sure where it originated, but the, the place I learned about it was uh, the Band of Brothers. You guys ever watched that that HBO series? And so if uh, if there was like is you know World War II Alpha Company or whatever, and uh, if somebody like got killed in war and you couldn't recognize who they were, they were effed up beyond all recognition. Uh, so oh, that, yeah. That's that foobar, F -U -G -A -R. Oh, that's okay. Well, what's this foobar? Isn't that the same thing? I don't think so. You don't think so? <laughs> Isn't that F O O B A R? Yeah, it's F O O. Yeah, but why is this foobar? So, like, why why do people use this foobar? Oh, I'm just curious. It's an interesting. I've only heard the part of it as it relates to programming. But oh, really? Functions. I've never heard the bar part. Is there a bar part? There's a, there's yeah, there's there's a bar part. There's there's a bar part? They're, they're not like I don't think you ever use them. Together, there's a foo, and then there's a bar, and separate. I think they're just traditional learning variable names for when you don't have any other yeah, name. But you don't, you don't normally combine the two. The yeah, two bar. usually not. Huh. Yeah, you're referring to like F U B A R. Yeah. And that is like kind of derogatory, right? Yeah. yeah. I was just always kind of tripped out on like, why do they use foo bar? It seems like it probably comes from. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Maybe I, I, I don't know, obviously. According to Wikipedia, <laughs> Let's hear it. They seem to have separate origins. But oh, cool. The use of bar as a programming word might be related to the military one. Ah, uh, nice. But it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it would actually be a really good name for a bar in Silicon oh, Valley. Yeah. Right, like you could go, you know, have a couple of drinks, get a little foobard. <laughs> I went to foobar, got a little foobard. That's pretty good. There's a there's a cafe at the University of Michigan Computer Science Building called Foobar. Interesting. All right, so we're out of time, but we got all the way up to slide 24. Ad. I think you're starting to see how Memcache works. I want you to all build uh, Facebook by Monday. <laughs> so uh, before, before we uh, in Memcache. <laughs> Before we clean up, a couple oh, Daniel's got a couple of announcements. Hang on one sec. So yeah, before we clean up, uh, Memcache is fast and useful and such, but it is limited in size by whatever Google gives you. So Google will clear up Memcache entries whenever it's getting too full to keep it within the size possible. Just get rid of the oldest one. So don't assume that because you put something in, it's still there because Google may have decided to clean it up. Google will also clear up the entire thing if you have if your website hasn't been accessed in a while because it shut down all your instances or whatever. No warning, no, right? No, no, you'll just you'll just uh, you'll just next time you access Memcache, it'll give you the uh, cache miss. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, your site your site will start back up again as soon as someone goes back to it. But uh, but yeah, just don't assume that because you put something in Memcache, it's still there. It will get removed by Google whenever they decide that it needs the memory for something else. That's cool, man. Thank you. So yeah, no you guarantees with Memcache. Basically, you have to run your application very often to make sure that it's... Yeah. yeah. I think it's like every 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. I think it's like 30 seconds of no use. 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. That's like, you know, a year in computer time. That's like three bazillion <laughs> nanoseconds. Well, for Go, at least, I think it's like 30 seconds because Go can you can start up a new Go, the Go server. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.